In the last video, we weighed all the soccer players in a team and lined them up from lightest to heaviest. The player numbers show the player's place in the list and are written at the top. The player weights show their weight in kilograms and are written at the bottom. But we have to clear up something first. The number of kilograms tells us the person's mass, not their weight. Mass and weight are similar words, but they're not the same. To get the difference, let's imagine that Natalie becomes an astronaut and that her suit weighs almost nothing. Her mass is 61.9 kilograms and tells us the amount of matter she's made of. And this depends on how many and what kind of atoms she's made of. On the other hand, her weight is how much gravitational force that Earth pulls down on her with. The stretch of a spring shows us her weight. Or how heavy she is. Because weight is a force, it should really be measured in the units of force. But what are they? The units of mass are kilograms. Whereas scientists call the units of force newtons. After the famous scientist Isaac Newton, many say he's the greatest scientist of all time. To give you an idea of how big a Newton is, this really heavy suitcase weighs 300 Newtons. You can see how much it stretches this spring. How much will Natalie stretch it? Hmm, about twice as much. She must weigh about 600 Newtons. If Natalie goes to Mars, her mass will still be 61.9 kilograms because she's still made of the same atoms. Her amount of matter hasn't changed. Natalie didn't leave any of herself behind. But her weight on Mars is only 230 Newtons. She's a lot lighter. On the moon, her weight is only 100 Newtons. And in deep space, her weight is zero Newtons. She's weightless. How come? Well, gravity comes from the planet or moon she's close to. If Natalie goes a long way from planets and moons, their gravitational effects become very weak. Or nothing at all. What's Natalie's mass in deep space?
Her mass is still 61.9 kilograms because her amount of matter is the same. Natalie is made of the same atoms and is still all there. Here are our 11 soccer players, all weightless in space. Which is better to line them up, mass or weight? Why? Not weight, because none of them have any weight. Mass is better to line them up because each player's mass stays the same everywhere in the universe. It's consistent. OK, all we need to do is change the name from player weight to player mass and it's fixed. In our last video, we pretended that each soccer player was a different kind of atom on the periodic table. With their atomic number at the top and atomic weight at the bottom. Can you think of a word that we could change here? We could swap atomic weight with atomic mass. But both ways of saying it are officially correct, even though weight and mass mean different things scientifically. Which is confusing. This video's job is to tell you that people mix up mass and weight all the time. Even scientists. Just remember, where the scientists say atomic mass or atomic weight, they're really only referring to the atom's mass. Because mass stays the same everywhere. Of course, each player's mass in kilograms is much bigger than a real atom's. An atom's mass is only about a thousand trillion trillionth that of a soccer player's. Natalie's overall mass of 61.9 kilograms is equal to all the tiny masses of her atoms added up. In the next video, we'll show how we can measure the incredibly tiny mass of a single atom.